The world of watches has changed. Our perception of watches has changed. Not only do we appreciate them more as luxury items today, not only are they seen less as essentials and more like a sign of punctuality and a sign of appreciation of an older time, but these items are valued far more than they ever have been. Yes, we can see the sentimentality tied to them in situations, but their worth monetarily is one thing that's brought to light more and more. I mean, I've been in this hobby for about seven years and I've noticed how drastically things have changed. Entire YouTube channels and Instagram handles exist today solely because they speculate about the price, the rise, the fall and return of watches. Like we're dealing with shorting stocks or something. That's fine, to each their own. This concept has never been or will ever be the reason why I own a watch. This is not the reason why I got into the hobby in the first place. And this video was sparked after I read the same comment three times in a single day on completely unrelated watch videos. It's a better watch because it holds its value. And those comments got me thinking, not just about the person behind the comments, but the meaning linked to the statements. Are people actively buying watches to sell them nowadays, or are they buying them with the pretext that they will be selling them soon after? The question I ask is why has this perception of value become such a prominent focal point in recent years? Okay, this is where I want to start. I believe the word value has been lost in translation, literally. I think the word has been so overused in recent years that there is a language barrier of some kind. And some of these languages cannot actually separate its primary meaning from the others. Now we can agree that a noun sits higher in the hierarchy compared to a verb. And there are two distinctions when we look to the word value. Value, said as a noun, is defined as to regard that something is held to deserve the importance, usefulness or worth of something. Value, when it's said as a verb, is to estimate the monetary worth of something. These aren't just semantics, because value is a powerful word. You know, the value of something is all-encompassing. When you tell a person that you value them or their opinions, it does carry a lot of weight. Bringing it back to watches, we think of our parents or our grandparents' generation. You know, family members that survived through the Great War, through the 1930s, the Second World War. They saw the world differently. They had to see the world differently. Life was precious. And we all know, no matter where you live in the planet, where you come from, that they valued things differently. For them, a watch was a watch, a timekeeper, a useful tool, a luxury. They took great pride in them. They looked after them. They were of the generation that if something broke, it was repaired, not thrown away. Maybe this new age throwaway culture is another reason for this trend. When you think of the items that they passed down to you, they valued them. They would tell you a story or many stories about them how they would work for a few cents every hour to finally get it years later. And if we return back to using the word value as a noun, they regarded that something is held to deserve importance. So you see what I say in this, hopefully. That much like how society has changed, the way we value or perceive value today has changed too. Not only with how people interact with each other, but with how products are perceived. The value of the watch, therefore, does have a small percentage of sentimentality tied to it, but people, the majority of people today, if we look at this broadly, are more interested in the monetary value of the item. Brand names matter. I'll use Rolex as the main example because at this stage it's a language we all speak. I read this Forbes article and the opening lines was to basically say that you should keep the value retention of your watch foremost in your mind when making a purchase and that this value retention is important. It also used words like rarity, obscurity, and brand names all factoring into this, apparently. I'll also point out that the first line had a terrible spelling error, so take that with a pinch of salt. Now, yes, there are some brands that have somehow been <laughs> confirmed as better than the rest when it comes to retaining their monetary value. Realistically, though, it's all to do with demand. Like, if the entire world wants to own a brand, then naturally it'll allow their prices to climb. A Rolex Submariner is just a Submariner. There is nothing remotely rare about the watch. The brand simply makes less of them that the everyday person cannot get their hands on one, which trickles down to someone out there ramping up the price of the watch on a secondary market platform. Enough people follow what that person does until the watch sells for two to three times more than its asking price. The value of the watch, it's romantic, isn't it? Now there is no doubt that a brand name is important and I implore you to look into different manufacturers, look at what they offer. But my philosophy might be different to most. I'm more interested in buying the design first and the brand second. And it is a great practice to follow that I highly recommend. 
In fact, if you had to summarize me and this channel and what I do here, it's, it's to buy the design and not the brand. Because if you solely focus on buying a brand, you are putting yourself in a box. You're limiting yourself to a handful of pieces and you get tunnel vision. Rather look at the brand as a whole and ask yourself what are the best pieces that speak to you. Because if you value the watch, chances are very likely you will value the design. Now because we have so much more access to information today, even the casual watch person seems way more detail oriented. And these details now, these criteria today, are, it's been blown so far out of proportion. Going back to the Submariner analogy, a decade or two ago a Submariner was just a Submariner. Now everything has a nickname. And it's necessary that everyone needs to know about every reference number, every difference between a line of print on the dial. And the vintage watch space, I think, is the original culprit because, you know, we used to have the reference 5512. It's all you needed to know, the reference number. And it's now a very rare gilt dial, tropicalized, exclamation mark, ghosted bezel, eagle beak, crown guard. But where vintage is finite, the modern watch space should not be seen the same way. Putting stock in things that don't really matter in order to drive up the price or the value of the watch once again. So should you buy a watch that holds its monetary worth? Well, it should not be foremost in your mind. You should buy a watch because you enjoy it, because you have a connection with it, because it's something you've wanted for a long time. Because if you buy into this watch with the sole intention at the very beginning to focus on it, its monetary return, whether or not it actually holds its value or increases in value week in, week out, it's a very limiting experience because you won't even get enjoyment out of wearing it. You won't want it to get a scratch. The mere thought of damage would put you off from wearing it. Because of course, it needs to be pristine if you want top dollar. Really? The watch was never made to be put away in a safe. These were always built to be used as instruments. And they certainly never were built to be bought and sold incessantly. The mechanical watch is one of the last bastions of the old world. The non-digital world. One that doesn't run on batteries or will become obsolete in a few years time. It's the combustion engine, purely working on mechanics and simple principles. And that's the reason why it deserves to be cherished and enjoyed. This should not be an object that belongs in a pile with statistics. You know, these things are supposed to be on the wrist and taken everywhere with you. Come to my attention that the five main watches in my collection have all gone up in value since I bought them. Does this detract from the experience at all? Does this make me more cautious or want to wear them less? No. In my case, I went into this hobby with the thought and the appreciation of owning these things. I spent a lot of time considering which one I'd want to own and form a bond with it. Whether you look at it one way or the other, or down the line, whether you look at it purely from a sentimentality point of view or as something that has monetary worth, or both, value is important. The value of the watch is important. I would even say it's paramount. But I think what so many platforms don't hammer home is that this is about enjoyment. So if the watches that you have in your collection now don't ring the same way they used to, or that they've gone so far up in price that it just doesn't feel justifiable owning them anymore, sell them. Every day of the week, your enjoyment should come first. And if this is a hobby, more so. I love wearing finely made quality watches. They work flawlessly. There are so many designs and details and histories linked to them. Yes, you can see this hobby as a very materialistic thing, but you're also wearing a brand and its legacy. You're wearing a name of a company that's been around for hundreds of years. In a lot of ways, you are a custodian and it should be a privilege to wear the watch. So how do you, as an owner, judge the value of your watch? I would be very interested to know from you in the comments. But at the end of the day, if there is no passion, what is the point? In 50 years time, when you're sitting around the table with the next generation, will you be happy talking about how you made a deal selling off a steel watch, possibly regretting that you let it go? Or would you prefer sharing stories about what the watch has seen with you, the one that's on your wrist? The true value that comes from anything is enjoyment. And we shouldn't be engaging in a hobby like this if it's governed by statistics. Passion is what keeps the enjoyment alive. And the word value, when used as a noun, is so much more powerful, so much more all-encompassing compared to when it is used as a verb. I hope there was a message in that somewhere. Um, I'd be interested in knowing from you what value means to you when it comes to watches and how you value your watches. Am I just getting too sentimental? Is this too emotional? Should we not be emotional about these things? I don't know. Interesting topic though.